Hi, welcome back Tigers. Today what we're going to be learning is to find the point intersection with these two equations. Now, what we're trying to do is figure out where these two lines will cross or intersect one another. So we're going to do something called the equal methods process. Now, I have these two equations. Y is equal to 3x minus 2 and y is equal to 5x plus 8. Here's what I'm going to do. Since they both start with y, I am going to make them equal. Thus, this will be the equal methods process. So, I'm going to take this first uh, equation, 3x minus 2, and I'm just going to make it equal 5x plus 8. Now, I say to myself, do I have an x on the left side of the equals? Do I have an x on the right side of the equals? Which x is smaller? Now the 3x is smaller, so I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. When I subtract from one side of the equals, I need to do the same to the other side. I end up with this negative 2 is equal to 2x plus 8. Now, I have a number after 2x I want to get rid of, and that's positive 8. So what I need to do is subtract 8 from both sides. When I subtract 8 from both sides, I end up with this. Negative 2 minus 8. I always like to think of this like money. I lost $2. I lost 8 more dollars. So I've lost a total of $10 is equal to 2x. Now, the 8s cancel out. Positive 8, negative 8. I had $8. I lost $8. I end up with nothing. So I have negative 10 equals 2x. Now, what is the number in front of x? The number in front of x is 2, so I'm going to divide this side by 2, divide that side by 2. My final answer is going to be x equals negative 5. Now, I'm not done yet, because I want to find the point of intersection. I want to find out where these two lines will cross. So, I need to take my answer, x is equal to negative 5, I need to select an equation that looks easier to work with. The top equation has the smaller numbers, so I will probably use this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute my answer, negative 5, in for x. 3 times a negative 5. So 3 times a negative 5 is negative 15 minus 2 more. I lost $15, I lost two more dollars. The point of intersection is going to be negative 17. This is how you do the equal methods process. If both equations start with y, we can just make them equal and we start to solve our equation. We want to solve not only for x, but also for y. Hopefully that helps you as you go through this process. Hi, welcome back Tigers. We are doing something called the equal methods process and what we're trying to do is find the point of intersection. Now, uh, we have these two equations. Y is equal to 1 half X minus 3. We also have this one. Y is equal to 3X plus 2. Now, what I want to do is find the point of intersection. So I need to solve these two equations. I'm going to do something called equal methods. Now, a lot of kids really dislike this type of problem because of this guy right here, this wonderful little fraction. Let me show you a little thing that we can do if there's one fraction in our problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rewrite my problem. 1 half x minus 3 is equal to 3x plus 2. I basically made those two equations equal. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Since there's only one fraction, I'm going to use the denominator against itself. And let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to take this denominator of 2, and I'm going to distribute. I know it sounds a little strange to do, but watch what happens. If I take this 2 and start to distribute, I'm going to multiply it across everything on my equation. Now, you can only do this if there is only one fraction. So, watch what happens. My numerator just comes on down, 1x. What's 2 times negative 3? 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times 3 is positive 6x. 
2 times 2 is 4. And basically what I'm left with now is no fraction. The fraction basically got turned against itself. And so now I'm left with this. Now, I have an x on the left side of the equals. I have an x on the right side. The x on the left side is less than 6. So I'm going to subtract the smaller x. So I'm going to subtract 1x from both sides, just like this. I am left with this. Negative 6 is equal to 6 take away 1 is 5 plus 4. Now, I'm left with this part of the process. I've got negative 6 is equal to 5x plus 4. This number after x I want to get rid of. I want to eliminate. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, just like this. And I'm left with this. I lost $6. I lost four more dollars. So I've lost $10. The fours cancel out. Positive four take away four is just zero. Now I'm left with this negative 10 is equal to 5x. I'm going to divide this side by 5, divide that side by 5, and my final answer is going to be x equals a negative divided by a positive is a negative. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Now, I'm not done yet because I want to find the point of intersection. I want to know where those two equations, those two lines, when I graph them, where they will intersect. So I've got this first answer, negative 2. Now, I need to ask myself, which equation looks easier to work with? Which equation looks easier to substitute my answer in? Well, this first one is kind of tricky because there is a fraction, and not a lot of kids like fractions. So I'm going to use the second equation. 3 times x, and I already know that x equals negative 2. So 3 times a negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2. I borrowed $6 from somebody, and I only paid them back two of those dollars. I always like to turn these into dollars. It makes more sense. My final answer is going to be negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. That's where those two equations will cross when I graph them. Hopefully this helps you as you go through the equal methods process. Now, with these two equations, we did have one that had a fraction. And since I only have one fraction, I can distribute the denominator all the way through. It works only if you have one fraction. Hi, welcome back everyone. In the last clip, we were talking about the equal methods process. That's where we're trying to find the pointy intersection when we have two equations. And in the last clip, we only had one equation that had a fraction. Well, this time we have two equations with two fractions. So let me show you what to do in this situation. I've got this first equation. y is equal to 2x minus 2. And then y is equal to 3 fourths x minus 3. So here's what I'm going to do. Since they both start with y, the equations both start with y, I'm going to make them equal. Now, I'm going to take my 2 thirds, x minus 2. I'm going to make it equal 3 fourths x minus 3. Now, in the last video clip, I had talked about how when you have one fraction, you can distribute the denominator. Well, in this situation, we have two fractions. One fraction is on the left side of the equals and the other fractions on the right side of the equals. Well, here's what we can do. We need to find a common multiple, a common denominator, if you would like to say it, between these two numbers. So if I say all of my multiples of 3 and say all of my multiples of 4, I need the smallest possible number that I can multiply everything by. Here's an easier way of doing it. If you want to find the smallest number, you could. But the other way, and there's lots of ways to do this problem, you could take just 3 times 4. 
3 times 4 is 12. I can multiply everything by 12. Now, if I listed all of my multiples of 3 and all of my multiples of 4, I would have ended up with 12 as well. But the little shortcut is, let's take my two denominators, multiply them together, and go from there. So, here we go. I'm going to multiply everything by 12. So 2 times 12. 2 times 12 is 24. My denominator still stays there. We'll show you what happens next. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. 12 times 3 is 36. Divide by 4. The denominator still stays there. And then negative 3 times 12 is negative 36. Now, what I need to do is clean up these fractions. I, I want to make sure that these fractions will basically just reduce down. Since I was using a number that 3 and 4 can both divide into, and that number was 12, watch what happens. 24 divided by 3 is 8. If I keep going, 36 divided by 4 is 9. Oh, I forgot my x. I do apologize. I forgot my little x up there. Hello, there's my x. So I've got 36 divided by 4 is 9. Don't forget that x just like I did. Minus 36. Now, all of the fractions have basically just eliminated. We've reduced them down to whole numbers. Now, I've got 8x on the left side. I've got 9x on the right side. Which x is smaller? 8x. So I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. When I subtract 8x from both sides, this is what takes place. I've got negative 24 is equal to 9 take away 8 is just 1. You could put the 1 in front of the x, but you don't have to. So I've got negative 24 is equal to x minus 36. Now, I still have a value after x I need to get rid of. So I need to add 36 to both sides of the equation. When I add 36 to both sides of the equation, this is what takes place. 36 take away 24. And in the last couple of video clips, I had talked about how I like to turn this into money. So I had $36 and I spent 24 of those dollars. So I'd be left with $12. So x equals 12. Now, we're not done yet because we want to find the point of intersection. All we did was find the x-coordinate of where these two equations will cross. So what I need to do is take this and substitute it back in to one of these equations. Now, both equations deal with a fraction. And so I need to decide which fraction I really want to work with the most. I'm just going to select the first equation. And the reason why is because the numbers are a little bit smaller than the second equation. So I'm going to take 12, and I'm going to substitute it in for x. Now, here's how you multiply with fractions. It's really simple to do. All I'm going to do is this. What's 12 times 2? 12 times 2 is 24. Divide by 3. And I keep going because I want to reduce this fraction. So I'm left with this. y is equal to 24 divided by 3 is 8. 8 take away 2 is 6. So I'm left with y equals 6. So my two lines, my two equations, will actually cross at 12, 6, at the coordinate 12, 6. And that's how you can do this. When you have two fractions, what you're trying to do is find a number that you can multiply the equation by to get rid of that fraction. Some kids will be tempted to turn these fractions into decimals. Well, 3 fourths is 0 0.75, 75 hundredths. There's only one problem with 2 thirds. 2 thirds is a repeating decimal. So that's not going to help you. So when you see two fractions like this, try to find a number that you can multiply everything by that will also divide by the denominators. And what we did was 3 times 4 was 12, and we multiplied everything by 12. 
Hopefully that helps you as you go through the equal value method. And when we do the equal, equal value method, what we're trying to do is find the point of intersection. 